So I'm broadcasting this already. I hope it says it's broadcasting. All I have to do is um, share the screen, and I sh I'm going to share the entire screen. Yeah. So just hopefully whoever comes in, if um, Daniel said he was going to come in, but other people might as well. So it'll just um, do this the crazy thing for a while. But if we go to the drive, um, I'm pretty sure you should be able to run it. Now, I'm actually running this one here. This is going to be distracting for you. Is that distracting? Maybe. So um, we're using that. Yeah. So okay. um, if I can get it onto this one as well. I might just turn this. Uh, maybe I should turn this one off. Alternatively, I go. Mm. No, it'll be delayed on here. Um, do you know how to make these um, full screen? You, I think you just present. You, 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 you do it. Yeah. I'm not sure oh. whether that's in the way. So. Um, oh. No, excuse me. I am. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to go with that rather than this one. Okay, that's, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Um, I'm hoping it's recording now. Okay, last part. Um, everyone hopefully understands uh, that we might actually get a chance to do presentations and we've done some. Um, but if everyone who wants to do a presentation um, tries to keep it short, we might get through most of them tonight or all of them tonight. If you don't get presented to the show, unfortunately. Um, Kate wants to present about um, her thing. A bit later, she's not actually here. We're recording the, uh, the hangout for it. Um, but uh, we'll see how we go. But you don't have to present. It's not, it's not necessary. It's all part of the 10%, um, the if you like. Uh, it's kind of a hurdle, 10%. Everyone's done some um, work, like even any work presenting. presenting before, any kind of contribution to the uh, need, any other work that you've done that is like kind of attendance, attendance, comments. <laughs> Don't panic if you don't get to present your thing. It's not actually marked on your presentation. But you do have to do a review, and that is actually marked in the review as the you've given back to the person to review. All right, so um, Solani and, uh, and Joyce are going to give us a little bit of a run through about a concept we haven't actually explored at all, although it goes back to uh, community yeah, practice. Yeah. So I'll hand over to you. Um, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so tonight we're going to explore the notion of knowledge management and some factors that can influence the success of communal no uh, management of knowledge. So to start off. Yeah. OK, so we're going to just um, do a bit of a warm up activity. And we're going to need two volunteers for this. So who's going to be brave to come in? Well, yeah. Okay. And we, okay. What do I have to do? Okay. So we're going to give you a few questions. Yes. And the both of you have to answer them. But one of you gets to discuss it with the others. The and other one does it? Yes. Okay. I won't, I won't discuss it. Okay, so you, you're you going to have to answer them all by yourself, and you can't use the internet, of course. Okay, I'll just okay. be, I'll be um, the control person. Okay, mm -hmm. control person. Yeah. Yes. So I'm you can discuss it with... No, um, I thought, uh, Cheryl was going to discuss it, okay. I'll, I'll, and I'll be the control. Okay. Okay. So these are the questions, and you'll get... Can I make notes? Yes, yeah. you can. Maybe you can just write and down You can just board. write down, yeah. Any board. And um, you get seven minutes. Okay, great. And you can discuss it with the others. Yeah. 
Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. So I hope we've got Amy, Daniel, and uh, possibly Daniel Field online, but I'm just going to check the uh, C22, C21. Maybe that um, I'm his in, so that's good. Um, okay, so Amy's coming in from outside, hopefully. And everyone should know that we're doing an activity online, just so. But I just can't see Daniel Field, which I'm hoping. Um, <coughs> And while I'm here, while they're doing that,
Yeah, okay. <coughs> Do you want to share what you've got? Okay. All right. Um, got to be careful. It's just like a working town. I've just missed the four that I've been to. It's one of them is the Pomodoro Sardo, which is an Italian Sardinia restaurant on uh, Lonsdale Street. It's very nice. It's around from the works. One called Brim CC is an organic Japanese restaurant. Uh, RAC Club, I've been there a couple of times. The father in law, they got a la carte and bistro there. And I used to love going to the Dhaka restaurant, uh, which is an Indian uh, Bangladeshi place. Uh, tips to, to eat healthy is to eat well, avoid alcohol, drugs, exercise, fresh air, a variety of activities, have a good work life balance, and be nice to people. The countries that I can think of were Spain, Sardinia, Samoa, Somali, Sudan, Switzerland, and Swaziland. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. It was a little unfair. That's all right. Yeah. So, how do you feel when you have to do it by yourself? Well, I just um, did it by myself, that's all. It's just, <laughs> oh, it was me, you know, that's it. I, I could just only draw from my own personal experience. Yeah. yeah. And you? I'm not Brain's trust. Yeah. And that is exactly what knowledge management is about. It's about sharing knowledge with others because obviously I guess um, well this was it was more it was about quantity like because um, Bruce got like four restaurants I think and you had a bigger number because you spoke to a lot of people and then they give you their ideas as well but basically if you work with other people you're going to have more ideas different perspectives sharing of knowledge and that is what knowledge management mm -hmm. is about yeah. So, so you didn't say you had to be there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could put McDonald's down. Yeah. So for, for the last experiment, we proved that um, a group of people can produce larger quantity of the answers. But does that mean the quality of the, the answer is better than the individual ones? Um, so I'm going to show you something that this, who knows this? It's, um, it's a Chinese geometrical puzzle, so consisting of a square cut into seven pieces, which can be arranged to make various shapes. So as you can see, if each piece of the puzzle stands for knowledge, a piece of knowledge, if you only have one piece, um, for example, a triangle, you can only have a triangle, no matter you rotate it or change change it but you can only have a piece of triangle but uh, if you have seven pieces of puzzles we actually can have a large number of configurations so according to the figure it says um, that so far there have been 6,500 um, combinations of doing this kind of puzzle mm -hmm. so that means if we in, in reality we may have more than seven pieces of knowledge so we can have like millions or even more than that uh, numbers of combination it's all about resembling and remixing the knowledge so ah, yeah so when it comes to knowledge do you think can you think of any other word comes to your mind that uh, is related to knowledge data information knowledge yeah. We wanted to do a word. Knowledge is a word. Yeah, can we yeah, do so, it? Um, um, you can we need that Java um, 
plug in, I guess, because yeah. that, that wasn't on my laptop. We'll just do it on that one. We'll just swap over yeah. to that one. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine. So we're we're going to try it. If, try it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can try and record it for the people off, off yeah. the site with this, and then they can see yeah. it at least. So if you can do the Wordle on that. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It, hopefully it's got the Java plugin already there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, I'm just going to... So everyone who's listening, we're just trying to get into Wordle, and we're going to use the Wordle to come up with... Oh, well, no, it room. is in. But it that's okay. In. We have a backup question. <laughs> <laughs> should we... I don't know. It says... Wordle.com, is it? The, yeah, the plugin is blocked, so should I allow it now? Yeah, allow it. You might say you can't do it. Yeah. Because it's the yeah. university computer. It won't let it That's let you. Fine. Is that right? Yeah, it's not. It won't. It won't okay, let you. Okay, so, so yeah, unfortunately, yeah. you can't install a, yeah, yeah. a Java yeah, plugin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Have you got the backup? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just talk about it. Yeah, we'll just talk about it. That's yeah, fine. yeah. We, just, also we can just put it on the name otherwise. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. good. Idea. Um, um, okay, so. Well, a knowledge <clears throat> is applied information. Okay. And what we talk about in information systems is the data, information, knowledge, wisdom continuum. Okay. Um, and so data is the raw facts, with no real meaning. Information is formatted data to give it meaning, whether it's sorted or um, labelled. And applying information is actually knowledge, and wisdom is acquired knowledge. Yeah. And they're looking at the information. Uh, yeah, it's knowledge. Wrong, but, yeah. Uh, it's, that's the that's I mean, science in the of knowledge. Is, it's a pretty big concept. When we yeah. say epistemology, yeah. yeah. that's a big word I learned in RER. I'm not sure we're talking about knowledge when we're talking about information on data. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now all the, 
the manuals for photocopies now are actually in the photocopier as firmware. And what we had to have was a system where they could put bulletins in. So they could, so they could share what we call tacit knowledge. You know, knowledge uh, uh, where a repairman would say, oh, well, manual says this, but a better way to do it is in another way. And so this is um, a way of creating a knowledge management system, so to speak, regarding photo sort of a parallel actually then. That's pretty interesting for this. Well that's well that's the knowledge management system. And yeah, in within it, yeah. Well that this is true, yeah, that's right. But that was one of the big problems that they had, that they got so many machines that they need a big bag and carry around with so we basically scanned them and put them in a database so they can the search their words or the product that come up. They had to be able to put bulletins in to enhance the knowledge. So, and another thing I've mentioned is explicit and tacit knowledge as well. Uh, explicit knowledge would be which way to turn a nut to get off a, a stud, for instance. The tacit knowledge would be how to get that nut off and slightly like stuck without snapping the stud, and an experienced mechanic would know how, when it's going to snap and how to, you know, a bit of WD-40 or just the feel it. I, mean, I call that tacit knowledge through experience and wisdom. So that's, I still see that as part of that continuum. <laughs> that's good, yeah. That's pretty much what we're going to talk about here. Yeah. And I think the great minds think alike. You mentioned some points that those you did, yeah. People like the, the qualification year two set, where they so we're going to talk about the qualification yeah, that that comes in. Yeah. Um, so these are the two perspectives that this article gives. Um, the one is from the KM, the knowledge management perspective. So it says the knowledge is actually. Um, is a, like a framework for evaluating and incorporating new experiences and information. Um, so you can see the end product would be like documents or, or organizational routines or process or practices and norms. And another perspective is um, from the engineering perspective. So it, it defines the knowledge as um, data and information. Um, it brings to be to practical use in action to carry out the tasks or to create some new information. It's like a, an intellectual machine used to achieve a goal or it's like a generated capacity. Um, but um, there's a focus of both um, perspectives, which is knowledge is a, is a resource that needs to be managed. So, um, what is knowledge management? Yeah. So yeah, like she said that um, knowledge is a resource. So whether it's in the form of data or information, at the end of it, it needs to be managed. And when we have so much, how do we manage it? But the I guess the most, the, the main important goal for knowledge management is that the, the data and the information needs to be collected and it needs to be stored in a way that can be used effectively and efficiently by the other employees in the organization. So um, we found this, yeah, and we found this um, online where it basically talks about how the, in, like, the entire knowledge management cycle works, where you share knowledge, you apply it, you communicate it, measure it, organize it, store it, and uh, that all starts with creating knowledge, by creating knowledge. Um, so you have three different types of knowledge management systems. It's not mentioned in the article, but I just thought that it would be good to talk about it. And it's it's very, um, it, it focuses on business organizations, so I don't think it could be used um, in the field of education, except for the shared project files, 
But uh, basically, feedback databases is just about um, getting customer feedback, employee feedback, and using that knowledge that you collect to design and, and research development um, and for development project. And share project files is more about um, where you collaboratively work on a project, which I guess would could be applied to a school setting because you would work on collaboratively with other teachers and other um, members of the school. And, um, and it just allows everyone to um, upload uh, documents on the database. And research files would basically uh, research for a particular product. You would research um, uh, about competitors, or you would get um, research on what would um, increase your sales, and based on the information collected, you would uh, reflect on your assets of the company, and then that way you can develop the product. So this is just, they're just different types of knowledge management systems that we found. Okay, how is knowledge managed? Of course, it uses um, mainly ICT tools, and um, Joyce <coughs> has Oh, I've yeah. got an example from one of my <coughs> friends. He's working in a software software development company, and he told me that his company is using Basecamp, which is a project management tool for them to uh, manage the project. They can keep track of the progress of the project, and their clients can access to the, this application as well. So the major benefit of using it is sharing information and also save the costs of communication. Um, yeah, that's we basically what it, it is about. If you yeah. want to this video, short video, like one minute. Cool. One minute. Yeah. It, Will it play? Is this the eye to sound? Oh, maybe up to the sound. That's actually, yeah. To sound. Try turning it back on. I'm not sure. Uh, no, but if you put the sound back, it's a screen noise will come. Whether we get that feedback, I'm going to turn it on the machine. Just that sound? Oh, no, no. Maybe not, don't play. No sound? No. <coughs> Okay, so it actually needs to be, sorry. This needs to be off. Just kill this. And go back. Now, Is it a matter of going back? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Claudia, and I'm responsible for managing all of our big seminar projects. I used to keep everything related to the project crammed on the walls of my office. People needed to come to my office all the time to see my calendars and project boards. It was distracting. I couldn't get any work done with all the interruptions. I complained about it to a friend one day, and she suggested I try Basecamp. So I gave it a shot. I put all the tasks and dates for my bulletin board into Basecamp and invited everyone to the project. The next time someone came to me with a question about a project or to find out what something was due, I just told them to look on their computer. All the answers are in Basecamp. Now everyone can just look at Basecamp to figure out what's going on. My office is nice and quiet, I don't have to put all that stuff on my wall, and I'm much more relaxed without all the interruptions. So it's just a short video talks about um, how this 
application makes communication more effective. That's how it works. Yeah, Amy, um, Amy's not in there? I thought she was. Oh, yeah, she is, I think. She's found it. It's, it's oh, that address that's on the oh, right, yeah. it's on the chat. Oh, I yeah, I saw her in there. Um, okay, could you tell us uh, a few systems, knowledge management systems that might have been implemented at your workplace? Okay. Which is okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we use Moodle, um, which is a learning management system that makes you manage the knowledge for subjects. Um, there's also just the general databases where I can look up subjects, <coughs> find out who's enrolled, um, and then we've got the Nexus system where it has all our tasks there. It says, right, I've got um, Moodle due at the end of this week, and so we how many days. I must submit it. Yeah. <coughs> uh, there's Edna, there's SO, all these, all these systems, yeah, all in there. We use a system called Themisphere, which is based on Kibblesoft. It's the same system that RMIT used and lost all of their student um, enrolments. <laughs> obviously, they went through the the dire problem, oh, and yeah, it was oh, and it was uh, fixed yeah. after. RMIT had the problem, and I think that's why Melbourne Uni chose it. It was already fixed. Yeah. Oh, pre disaster. Yeah. Yeah. But it could be as simple as even a Google Drive, like, because that it is, it is a knowledge management system. I mean, um, even though, and it's free, but yeah, but of course, if you implement it in a school setting, you would have to pay for it for um, a larger space and to accommodate more data. But like, um, yeah. So Google is also a knowledge management system, and we have a few <coughs> examples here. So Apple, Google, and their list of knowledge management system providers. There's tons of them. Um, that, yeah, but I guess again it goes back to most of them are useful for business organizations and these large companies and not um, an education. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wikipedia is the knowledge management system, the practice system. It's the one. It's yeah. a community of practice of millions of people and it's sort of, the, I'll say, penultimate knowledge management system because, you know, uh, Getting the wig. When you Google things, when you will come up first, people are comfortable yeah. with it. It's, they're meant to be, they have citations and, and further links and things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that goes to types of the KMS model in the information systems. But before that, um, what I found out was there are basically three types of um, knowledge management system. One is lesson learned database where you, what it does is basically it, um, the, it the, the database retrieves uh, people and from it's retrieved from people who have already solved problems and they've got solutions for that. So, and then there's the expertise location, which basically um, links you to people who are experts in a particular field or give you a particular expertise. So I guess Wiki would sort of be the lesson learned database because it already has solutions to answer. So I guess, yeah. And then you have COPs, which is where there, there is a group of people who have uh, who come together to solve problems. And that's and then they 
and then you have the knowledge management systems as a way to share their knowledge. And then you have the um, index and or the integrative model or the social network model, which is described in the article. And um, I guess not much, I mean, not a lot of information was given in the article about these two uh, approaches. But what I found out was that the um, index or the integrative model is basically it uses the codification process and it invests once in a knowledge asset and it keeps using that uh, multiple times. Whereas the social network model, um, it just, uh, it links between individuals for exchange of knowledge and it pays, it pays a lot of money for customization of solutions. Um, so the, the index model invests uh, highly in the IT system, whereas the social network model invests moderately in the IT system. Um, the, invest, the, uh, the index model rewards people for contributing to the database, whereas the social network model rewards people for directly sharing knowledge. So examples of these two would be the index model is ENY and social network model is uh, Mackenzie is a social, uses the social network model. So yeah, that's the two types of, OK. Yeah, so next page is about contribution of communal structure. So the Wenger talks about the duality, uh, this kind of concept. So I think it, it would be better to use this symbol to represent um, the notion of duality. It's like um, this is the yin and yang, the tai chi symbol. So you can see there are two opposing forces, but uh, they actually finally become um, a driving force for change and creativity. That's what duality means. So he, um, Wenger, did, um, identifies four um, dualities, designed and emergent, identification and negotiability, local and global, and participation and reification. And the last one is closely related to knowledge management. So I will elaborate more on this um, uh, duality. So um, participation and reification um, duality is concerned with meaning. Um, so meaning is created through participation and active involvement in some practice. Um, so what does reification mean? Um, it means like it turns an abstract or um, some messy practice into something um, concrete, real, and um, easy to manage within a community. Um, that's basically what it means. Mm. So if we go back to the, think about the, 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 the ten grand, uh, that different pieces. So mm, each single piece has no meaning. It just uh, It is just a, a shape or a triangle or a, a square. But if we assemble them together, a, a triangle and a square can be a house, so it has we assign meaning to that. It, it turns into a new thing. That's how reification means. And uh, so there's another question: How can the idea of knowledge management be applied in a classroom setting? Because we're all teachers, we have to go back to our educational settings. How this idea can can be applied in our school setting. Do you want people to answer yeah. that question? <laughs> yeah, please. Or they can just like think about please. it. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit of a project um, that um, got weekly tutorial forums. Students must participate in particular external students and hopefully they will share their knowledge. Yeah. It's, Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of the mm -hmm. it's a really great idea. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe think not all the shapes are different, but they're different sizes. Yeah, yeah, so you, you get things yeah. 
So now we come to the last part, the finding of this article. Um, so it is a qualitative research about the factors that influence the success of communal management of knowledge. So uh, the author listed 13 factors that related to the characteristics of COPs. Um, so if we look at uh, each of them, there, some of them are really obvious, like the pre-existence of the community. So, um, as the, the the person who was interviewed said, uh, so if um, when a network of people exists, it, it facilitates, like the technology can facilitate um, the community of practice or something. But uh, if there was there wasn't a, a network there, if you bring technology. No, it it won't change anything. Mm -hmm. So this 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 might be the first factor, and the second one is the understanding of the community. So if people don't understand what the COP means, so they it's hard for them to work like that. Um, it's it requires like a high level of collaboration, also knowledge sharing, exchanging. So people should have um, a good understanding of how does this model work. Um, and then it's the formal structure of the community. Um, it's more like we, uh, they have procedures, rules, everything to keep everything in organized. Uh, keep everything organized, just like uh, our traffic rules, traffic lights. So there, um, there won't be any accident happen on the road. Uh, and then the size of the community. Um, I think Bruce might want to talk about this because he just. That is before. Regarding, yeah. sorry, the, the, the size, size of the community. Oh, well, that's right. One of the things that they leaned out of it, if the community is too big, mm. one of them over had a, over a thousand participants, that it's just, it doesn't work. Yeah. And so they divided it up, I think, into 13 separate communities. Practice. So, um, you know, it's, uh, so if there is too many people there, um, it can be unmanageable. Does anyone know a rough number of how many people could be in a community, a, a, a functioning community? I mean, I'm obviously a say it's a community, but it doesn't, it's not a kind of functioning kind of exchange communication community. Um, football membership, uh, you know, like you've got a community of football followers. Oh, God, that's huge too. Yeah. I was going to say that there is some data on sort of anthropological studies of tribes, and they reckon that it really is only about 150 people. You can't, to get a strong community bond, you know, that kind of bonding capital thing, um, you, need a you can't go past about 150. It's just a number, it could be averaged out, it could be more, a bit more than that, but it's rough. So that uh, that's sort of roughly aligns with what they said in their yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then the level of cooperation in the community, um, and also the vitality of exchanging exchanges in the community. And the presence of a shared repertoire, it's, it's like uh, within the COP, people have shared expertise, that, those sorts of things. And then the existence of a clear positive benefit, which I think is similar to the next one, the existence of a standard or indicator for the community. So people need to see the positive um, benefits, like they, they need um, the tangible benefits to motivate them to contribute. Um, yeah. And uh, the next factor is the quality of the exchanges. So uh, the participants uh, need to think it's helpful, and those, so they need to get some feedback from the um, questioners. So they might say, "This answer helped me, or not." Um, and then trust within the community um, that this is obvious, and and then the time allocated to the community activities. For example, in school settings, you will have regular staff meeting um, to discuss things. So the time must be allocated to um, promote these community activities. And then the existence of the rituals in communities. 
think it's a similar idea, like, like the regular staff meeting or something. Um, and then, uh, so those factors are within the COPs or the communities. And these factors are actually how the company, like the external factors, to support um, the community work. Um, certain aspects of organization itself acted as um, inhibitory or facilitating factors for knowledge sharing. The first one is support of management. So the company should support um, the management. And then the provision of resources for the community. Those things are or um, the company can do for the for each of the community community with community within the organization. And then the an organizational structure that facilitates co collaboration, uh, which is similar to the next one, like an organizational culture of sharing. So within the corporate, they have this kind of sharing culture. So the participants may more likely to share their knowledge and um, exchange knowledge. Um, the last thing is the supporting the use of supporting technologies. So the company will help them um, get the resource that they need or pay the software uh, to support their practice, media practice. Mm. I and mentioned the willingness to share information. Mm -hmm. um, when I was working in IT, a small software house, obviously we'd share a lot of information there. You know, if you've got a problem, you've got a bug, slides not coming up or a dialogue, we would share it within ourselves keep it in closed doors. We wouldn't share it with the wider community. And then uh, I was working in sales for a while, setting up um, uh, mini cloud solutions. And if I wanted to sell a product, everyone was willing to give me information about it to sell the product. So mm -hmm. it's, it was two different sides of the fence there. You know, you yeah. got very tight knit communities who don't want to let out that proprietary information because you know you've got some algorithm um, we I worked for space-time research did what's called super maps and used to take the census data and create demographic maps of everything and uh, and me and the senior software engineer we I, I did the, the actual maps for England I'd convert their format into our format but we would never tell anyone how we actually got to draw all those things on the screen and link up all the data so there is some proprietary information there, but I've found that salespeople will share as much information as possible, whereas the IT people will keep it very close to the chest how they mm -hmm. do things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in education, of course, I'm there to share as much as I can about algorithms and algorithms and data structures. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And that goes back to the different types of knowledge management systems. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you have the different databases where some of them, like you said, the sales, you would have to to sell it to the customer. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, there's obviously, you know, and people would write about a customer and go, oh, look, he's just a tire kicker. Forget about him. It's a waste of time. You know, another yeah. one, oh, this guy will buy anything that's brand new. And, you, know, you know, these are the customer relationship management systems uh, and about suppliers and stuff as well. You know, yeah. So, the old Walmart scenario where they were the first to let the suppliers see their inventory. So they wouldn't even have to order something, the suppliers would just give the products to them straight away, from, uh, upstream and downstream flowing. Mm -hmm. systems. And then, uh, ERP, Enterprise Resource Management um, Systems as well, that uh, relies on that. Yeah, so, so, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. Pretty much Lovely. It. Yeah. Um, so, very good. Quite detailed um, analysis and a very good kind of summary of that. Some really hard concepts, and it's something that obviously um, people are exploring on the uh, on the near. I think that's quite good to get a bit of a background idea that the companies, uh, I think, um, are naturally falling into this exploration of knowledge management as a way of actually and, and using some of the technologies. To do that, but as well as that, they're drawing from some of our the general theory, philosophy of um, how people might exchange ideas and learning and so forth, like we've been following in terms of um, units of practice. 
And I, I think that is actually very interesting, and they're probably exploring it because it is actually beneficial for their organisation. Mm -hmm. So it's not some, it's not a space, and I, I noticed that in the comments in the name is completely legitimate, that there is a scepticism about why companies, why we have to actually look at companies, and sometimes it does seem inappropriate, like they're very kind of organised and structured and the learning processes completely seem very different, but sometimes they actually do come up with kind of um, innovations or ideas that are worth exploring the future. So I'm not, I'm not disputing. Right? Yeah. 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 Y
they can email me or ask me and I'll add it to the user guide and that way in the future if someone has the same question, it's just on there. So it's interactive. If you click on the question that you have, it takes you there. So let's just say um, a teacher wants to know how to access Edmodo. They can just click on that thing and it'll take them to the page. Um, and you know the benefit of that is that it's really quick and easy for them to use. Um, and you know they don't have to read through the whole thing to get to their you know answer to their question. Um, this was really just a you know sort of a brief version. Future versions of this would have um, more stuff to do with cyber safety, appropriate posting, um, really beneficial things to post, and things that may not be so beneficial. Um, how to get the most out of um, your posts, things like that and how to see student involvement. Um, so there's a lot of things that could be added to it. Um, but also I sort of noted that technology is ever changing and while this is done now, next year Edmodo might come out with a total new interface or with new stuff on there. So as things change, it can be updated and changed. Um, and yeah, basically it just sort of goes through how to do all sorts of things like reset a password, create an account, um, create a poll, things like that. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you, Marion. So, I'm going to quickly go to anybody else who uh, wants to give us a quick run through. So, Bruce, are you ready? I'm going to just log into Moodle. I'll just show you the Moodle page. And so, can you do it through? Yeah, yeah. There shouldn't have any problems here. Yeah. Uh, anybody else ready to, to uh, give us a look at the run through? Not five minutes. A couple yeah. of minutes. Uh, a few months ago, I'd say, put it on with drive or something like that. If you want to talk about that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. You can go next if that's okay. Am I able to go into my drive? You should be able to, yeah. So you just go into your own Google Drive and you know, um, in a minute, we might see whether we can get the Avaya 3D environment up on the screen. I have a feeling that my audio out is not coming through. But like when I plugged it in, it's just being back. It's actually coming through my own speaker, so that's really a problem. Yeah. So okay. Um, right. This is your, sort of your home page of Moodle. It's got all the subjects I've done there, and uh, these are the last couple of semesters up here. Ooh. Um, and this is for Term 3, 2015. Okay, Moodle's quite very, very good. It's open source. Um, we're on to 2.7 or something now. So here's the main page. This is the introduction and everything. I've got the textbook cover there and uh, you can add all sorts of stuff. Everything grade there, the students can't see at the moment because it's not ready for them to see. I've got the course coordinators stuff and there's some videos. This is, of course, Programming fundamentals in Java. Now, the great problem with this subject is the uh, uh, it's an at risk subject. It's got a huge failure rate and a huge attrition rate because students, you know, from distant places, they think, oh, I'm going to learn to program. That's clicking a couple of buttons and dragging and dropping and stuff and don't realise the logic and everything behind programming. Um, so, what I wanted to do was to make the students more. Um, uh, engaged each week because some of them won't do anything for about four or five weeks and then comes time for the assignment they can't do anything you know they're just they're too far behind so from week one uh, we've got creating Java programs there and I've created a tutorial forum right so of course there's the uh, I've got a tutorial video or actually practically type in some stuff and show them uh, we've got the lecture slides here, we have the video clips, etc. Uh, instructions how to use the um, IDE, the Integrated Development Evolve. But the main thing I did for this was the forum. And here are discussion questions. Okay, so first one is to introduce yourself so they can answer back there. How to install the Java Development Kit and the Integrated Development Environment. Type in the example code and then First of all, just use a print statement to type their first initial. And here I've just given an example of typing out B, what, what it should look like. 
Um, so what I'm looking at the students to do is to basically interact on here, ask questions on a weekly basis, but post results and then in the final uh, assignment in their report is just to um, cut and paste some evidence that they've actually been on the discussion boards. Now I can go back and check if they had and it'll only be a mark or two. Now if I didn't have any marks for it, they probably wouldn't engage at all. So uh, um, they wouldn't engage at all. So basically I'm just making it worth a couple of marks for everyone. So hopefully that they'll start engaging from week one and learn how to program without um, you know having to plagiarize or hand in work that's not finished or be at me every night to complete bits of code for them. So um, each week is divided into topics. Uh, next week is sec week two is using data and here again I've just got questions up for there that they can post their output. If they post the answers there, I'm not worried because other students might say, oh, I agree or something. If they're wrong, well, I can jump in. Um, and as uh, the course coordinator, I can also monitor it so I can delete anything. So I've told them not to put any assignment solutions there or, um, you know, and then, of course, there's review questions in the textbook, which I can ask them to do, and then they, I can interact with them there. So All right. That's a move. Um, Great, that's a good introduction, and I didn't get Miriam to um, um, answer any questions if people had them, but uh, if anyone had any questions for Bruce, we can quickly answer those. If people got queries that they can't uh, don't quite get it or anything. But Moodle's great. You can, uh, if I go into edit mode, I'll just, just quickly. Okay, so everything's editable. I can move the topics around, and there's just so many resources I can actually add to each group so you know you can create an assignment link, Blackboard collaborate, chat, uh, database feedback, forums, that's what I use there, um, that you can put quizzes in, um, surveys, wiki, wiki there, it's it's brilliant. Okay. So we're we going to use Bruce as a knowledge management system. If you need to know about Moodle, he will be the go-to person. Yeah. But also obviously if he doesn't mind and other people don't mind, we can pull these uh, assignments up into it. Many people can have a look at them more broadly. Some people can't give us access to sites that they're working on. Their private. I'm sorry, I'm just going to go through Let's and keep going. Peter, if you want to have a go, um, you might have to log on. Okay, I'll sorry, I'm going real fast. And while Peter's logging on, uh, what I might just do is hand back to Miriam and give people quite a lot of conversation about your uh, resource in the name of So maybe people are okay about that. Do you want to get the idea of what things will be done? So you have questions? You're okay about you can explore when you use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty easy. Yeah. We've got help. Yeah. I was surprised that they used this question. Not my mark about it, but it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's exactly right. That's all we want. It's a really short background and get some questions if you need to. I don't understand what you're doing. <laughs> cool. My um my project that I wrote up was just the Google community component of this, which we called our share space. Um, but I tried when I became the IT leader at the school to um, change the school from just individual teachers doing their own thing with their own stuff on the server to making them much more collaborative. So the first step was to get them um, shared planning. So they all have um, shared planning templates, which all exist through here. You can see there's a year 4A, 4A, 4B and C, which I'm shared into. So I worked with them really closely. Um, but all the year levels plan collaboratively and have a shared planner uh, and a shared weekly um, timetable, I guess, for each of the groups. A lot of them share classes, so they work that way. Um, from there, I then got the teachers to um, create a just go over here, they're gonna work, yes. Um, a Google Plus community and I'm part of a few. Um, but the one that the teachers maintain most heavily is the share space. 
Um, so all the staff are members of that, the LSOs, the office staff, as well as all the teachers. Um, and even down to four of the regular CRTs are part of that community. Um, because they come in and out so frequently, they just come to me in the morning and grab a Chromebook so they can go off and see what they're supposed to be doing. So they don't even the teachers don't even need to leave work because it's already on their spaces. Um, and this share space is where teachers can talk about what they've been doing in class. They often upload little videos of things that they've done, um, just as a better way of people seeing what's happening across the school um, and getting ideas that they can then incorporate in their own classroom. There's a lot of um, PD is shared through there, so if someone goes to a PD, the expectation is that they'll share some information about it to here, um, which has been quite useful. They want a gold medal at the Teachers Games, apparently. Um, for the so all sorts of stuff get shared in there, and it's become quite social. Um, and one of the keys was one of the things that they kept saying was about the principal needing to be part of it. So I forced him into doing a weekly update in there, um, and he's you know, 64 years old and about to retire and not terribly keen on IT, but he now gets in there each week, writes his weekly update, expects that all of the staff go in and give him a plus one so he knows they've read it. Um, so you'll see there's only 26 there, so half of them didn't read it, but they're all not coming back next year, I think. So <laughs> they, they just don't know it yet. Pretty good introduction, Peter. I think Thanks. you'll be the go-to person for the Google Plus. But also, just I know that Peter had to get permission from his uh, community to let the reviewer in and me, but it's, yeah. it's not really likely that you'll be able to go in and, in there again. Is that right? But yeah, I'll, I'll remove that. The 51st user review email. Okay. So obviously, Peter, if you want to find out more, is there any questions prepared before we sit down? Um, yeah. 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 Well, chef. Yeah, the whole Robin, do you want to find one to this? Yeah. Because I was just going to pull up the assessment. Yeah. 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 Uh, I that one on that. I just went, that's There's 500, did you say, in the community? No, no, 50 in the community, 500 yeah. 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 uh, so yeah. I might miss the question, but the students use the, the Google environment? Yeah. But not all the shares, but no. students under 13 can't really move the password. I'm trying to think what my password is. Oh, you can't really move password. Can you just talk about it? Uh, if I can't get it. Anybody else like to? Um, I might have to go to Kate. I said that we might get to her, but. Um, 6.30 and just going 6.30. I'll just quickly talk about it. I'll just talk about it. Um, pretty simple. My project was just about a Edmodo community that I created with Year 7s this year and I sort of framed it as introducing them to um, the learning in a really fun and vibrant way, and way that they can um, use the community to do a number of different things. And I illustrated a couple of main things that I get them to do. Number one is that I get them to take a lot of formative assessments on there, so I'll just upload a quiz. Often, um, you know, probably not really correctly, but they'll just be multiple choice. So I should obviously put in some short answer if possible, but the multiple choice corrects itself, so you can just go put in eight questions literally right up on the board that before they go, they need to complete the Edmodo quiz. Um, so then I see it, then they only go once it's complete, and then they get immediate feedback. So they might get six out of eight or four out of eight. Um, in lessons where you want to dig a little bit deeper and after, you can sort of see what students are 
what individually knowing and maybe what questions as a group they don't really know because they've moto graphs that. So that's one of the main things I use it for. Second is to simulate discussion on there. So often I would um, post things from the real life. A um, couple of things recently I've done. Um, just some signs at a Beach just for a water safety unit that we're doing. So I posted them on there. This is a real life example. Best one probably I ever did was when I was in um, hospital and I just I put it on my sign and said, um, these guys might have been able to see it. They, um, this, the nurses were using incorrect terminology for bones and muscles, just using they call it the collarbone or whatever. And I just asked a question of a U7 class and they came back and, and tell all the correct medical terms for those bones and muscles, which was good. And the other reason, the third main reason I use it is for the um, just putting on work tasks and whatnot that they can access. So yeah, and I think for U7s it works really well. And um, my assessment too talked about how I think for next year in health we're going to use it across the board a little bit more. But yeah, that's just something we still need to nut out of school for the rest of this term in term four. So that was essentially my project, just looking at an online learning community for year sevens based on using the Edmodo format. Lovely. So um, thanks, Robert. Any questions for Robert? So Edmodo is a bit of a go to thing with both Miriam and, and Robert. So Robert, can they redo the, if they get too wrong with Moodle, you can set it up that they can do the quiz again, the whole lot, and it shuffles the order. Yeah, so you can select the multiple choice one to do the fill in the gap question, which you can set down to fill in the gap question, they have to start with the gap right. So they just start with the thing wrong. If you do match up questions too, I'm not sure what, how, whether the sound's going to work on this, um, but we missed out on seeing this environment, at, and it's because the, the computers here can't install the player. It probably is a bit of JavaScript, like we found just before with Wordle player. Um, the, uh, it's, it's just very similar to uh, Second Life, so anyone who's been in Second Life will see that, but the beauty of this is you can't fly. Um, so it's a Vaya. They've actually uh, brought out a new system which is completely different. Um, this one has got the uh, kind of avatars that uh, look like people. You can see Nathan just stood up. He's just here. Um, Amy's here. And there's Kate. Now, we haven't tested this. Kate hasn't tested this. Kate's just sitting stationary. Um, what uh, I, I'm hoping to do is to see whether or not the sound will work. But my sound is not working through these computers. This plug-in doesn't seem to take any any control of the sound? Are you talking? Hello. Hello, Nathan. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Hey. Hi, guys. Yes, I can. I just re-plugged in my sound. It did actually work. So that was I unplugged it and plugged it back in. It's not feeding back. So yeah. that's good. Um, yeah. I think I'm hearing you from Google Hangout. Though. Oh, maybe that's where we're oh. hearing it. Okay. So, are you talking from Google Hangout? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna Google Hangout. Yeah. See if we yeah, can. Do I might have to do the same, actually. I'm just gonna go to Google Hangout. Sorry, guys. Um, I just uh, mute.
and you have an order of uh, cost plus plus ten bucks a month or something. It's uh then you get on Facebook. Well, I think that's probably if, if people are pretty happy, that's a pretty good place to um, to finish. I'm not saying that uh, I wanted to finish um, just on the bay. I'm not saying this is the, the direction that you have to think about. I think you do, and, and you've actually got some grounding in the theoretical things. I've just turned on the, the sound from. I'll turn off my my sound in the bay environment, um, and hopefully that'll stop. I might have to escape. Um, because I, I'm actually still recording this and I just want to put the sound back on to the other environment. So one of the things that we, you wouldn't have a problem with is that kind of feedback loop in the because I've got my own computer in two different environments it's just feeding itself in. I quite like the fact that the sound is actually um, in this environment comes um, better. Becomes better at the closer you are. So if you, as I was saying, oh, can can people hear me? I've turned on, turned off. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a problem. Um, I've just turned off the sound in my um, Avaya environment. I'll turn the sound back on in the um, in the uh, Google Plus um, Hangout uh, because it was echoing, but it's not echoing now, which is sort of weird. The um, anyway. All I'm saying is you need to stay kind of on task with the ideas of shifting around in relationship to the new technology, mostly in relationship to the participation aspect of the way um, students or teachers can participate in these environments. I think you should you know, keep you know, your, your um, options open. There are plenty of ways to use the things that are developing. Uh, and thank you for your contribution. I think you should have all those or some of those sort of technologies are just as valid in the, that we need to actually understand much better, like Google Plus, like um, um, Google, like um, uh, the environment which you display and the different activities that will make these work. So remember, um, this is the last class. You do have to do a review. One of the reasons that everyone's Right. Uh, hopefully, is it Friday or Monday? It's the 26th, Wednesday. Monday. Okay. So Laura's so back to the future today. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Marty and Pierre. It's the 23rd. So, right, back to the future. 8, eight o'clock at night? Yeah. It's an 8 o'clock in the morning. No, no, it's 21. I don't know. 21 in the afternoon. 21 in the afternoon. American time or something? Ah, yeah, that's a good point. It might be able to wait until American time. But, uh, yeah, so it is just at least happening to wait the clock in the day. But remember, you've got to do that if you have some time to get that. Um, make sure if you want to you know, contact the uh, people uh, and send your review back to them, but also put it into the community so I can make them read it. I need to see you review, but you've got to send it back to the person so I have another letter if you want. If you uh, feel comfortable, uh, push your original project design, the description into the name. It doesn't really matter where you put it, if you just attach it to a blog entry or a posting, you can attach your files into the name, and then those files can be read by people. So if you're happy with other people um, seeing what you've done and destroying it, maybe even touch it. I, I really like it feel, and that was actually one of the things that we said in the time that we were in it. It was challenging to um, some of the other things that we were in that. So, although it's, a, it's really important to uh, have an assessment class, it is, this, um, I'd like you to explore these others by having a look. So, thanks so much, everyone. Has anyone got any questions? Um, we can expect to get our results right at the time. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I really wanted that. Unfortunately, I sense like I'm actually cheating you a bit, but I really wanted to read some of the reviews before I actually uh, committed myself. Um, so it will be after your reviews are uh, completed, completed, and I'll probably do the both together. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh,
Um, now that's a good point. I don't know when that gets cut off. It's it's not that the system actually gets cut off. It needs to exist. But whether or not. Um, um, sorry about this, guys. It just you might find that the sounds going in a sec. Um, You'll probably go right through and say, ah, this is part of what, uh, um, what I'm going to guys is a clear sporting membership. But that won't happen if you go up So on the EMP, they download as much as you can before they end up, you know, if you want to. So that, that would be the thing I would do. So we'll go towards, you know, the theater and we'll start the role. Um, we'll be right over. Right. Thanks, everyone. Um, and, and yeah, you can still use the me and co comment on things if you like the things you stand going, that's fine. I'll put some more information up there. Go back to the me, I'll put some more information up about free environment. We might have a new one that this company is working on. It's still available to tell you the water line. You get a different data file, it doesn't look like it. Looks like it. Yeah, quite nice. CB3O. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a strange, weird thing. All right, thanks everyone online. I'm, I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Um, I'll just unmute on the Avaya. Uh, so I had to mute in the um, Avaya environment. We're just finishing. Um, so hopefully you can hear me. I just uh, I finished the class. Thank you very much for the clapping. Um, and uh, we'll see you online in the Ning. Um, I've recorded this for Kate. I'll put an address up for Kate to have a look at the uh, earlier part of the class tonight. She probably won't be able to see this bit, um, but uh, it would be quite interesting to have a look to see what uh, Kate's uh, discussion was like. We probably won't hear it though because I had to switch off the sound so it wouldn't feed back. So thanks everyone that had a look in the uh, environment. I'm going to have a bit of a wave too. Um, so see you all and clap and can I wave? Where's the wave? I think it's number one. There we go. Bye everyone. See you, Robert. Is that you clapping, Robert? Good on you. You worked it out. Thanks, no worries. So that was a good one, so I just wanted to show you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Buy your own size. Go on and see. No worries, Peter. Thanks for presenting. That was good. I mean, I did, um, you know, I was trying not to do any kind of names, but I did actually scan the, the, the shot over your, your uh, Google Plus environment, but I don't think anyone would actually see it. Yeah, good. No Lovely. Thanks for your participation. It's been fantastic. No worries. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, it's great having you too, Kate. So, I mean, Kate, you, you do actually know about this sort of thing. You probably. Um, I haven't used this. I didn't know when you had it. Yeah, yeah, I know, but the, the good thing's going to be on Second Life, which I haven't read yet, but I know yeah, it's it really Second substantial. Life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. We should have a look. The only reason I'm saying this is because they're designing this for like learning environments for education, but mostly for firms and companies at the moment. They're the ones that are supposed to pay for it. Get us so, up off the ground. Like, Staff uh, I think uh, the, the kind of knowledge management staff, where you've got people at remote sites, oh, they'll okay. just go in and have meetings. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it'll be locked down a bit more than, say, Second Life. You're not going to go that far. You have one meeting in one space. You won't be able to fly. Yeah. So you bang your head against the. You'll be able to probably do all the things like jump and so forth. But you won't be able to, you'd be stuck and you'd be probably yeah. better off yeah. just to sit there and listen to the boring meeting. But that may be, you know, different. They might be thinking of other things to do. In fact, one of the things I was chatting to a guy from Melbourne Uni who's helping develop it, and I said, you need cars. You can't sit around and have a, you know, discussion. Yeah, just to Yeah, Yes. Anyway, so, but we got to see it, so that's good. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, fantastic. Let's keep investigating it. It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Okay, six Tani. Thank you for tonight. Good job. That was Thank really you. good. A lot of insights, actually. Because it was really, I mean, when we were reading it, we couldn't, like. You couldn't tell. Yeah, I know, but it came across really well. I, I, there's a lot of information that I didn't actually know about that you pulled into that. that Makes a lot of sense, really. So Thank that was you. well worth it. So thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah, great. I think I'm going to do one of my uh, electives next for next semester in the ICT one. Great. Yeah. Perfect. So All right. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. We'll see you around. Thanks so much. Good luck with everything. Thank huh? you. So there's no class next week. There's no class next week. I hope everyone's clear about. It. There's no class yeah. next week. Keep playing with stuff in the Ning. Talking to people if you need to. But there's nothing on next week. Okay. Yeah. Just get your assignment in. Yeah.